everyone welcome back to the channel if you are a new subscriber thank you for considering my channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you for always coming back to view my contents if you are a viewer thank you so much for considering to even look at my contents i do appreciate you all those who have commented those who liked those who didn't i appreciate you all you all are amazing let's get into it today i will be reading from the book of second samuel chapter 19 first let me welcome the holy spirit to dwell with me to read with me to instruct me into reading this passage and it was told Joab behold the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom and the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people for the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son and the people got them by stealth that day into the city as people being ashamed steal away when they flee in battle but the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice oh my son Absalom oh Absalom my son my son and Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines. In that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends, for thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive that Absalom had lived and all we had died this day. Then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by Jehovah, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. So remember now that David is king, and Absalom his son wanted to take the throne even while he was alive, and this was not to be so. Because the kingdom is to be given to someone else but Absalom placed himself to be king and here is Joab telling him telling the father which is David because David is mourning for his son he's crying over his lost child any parent would have done that no matter how bad your child is you are going to miss that child after the child go is gone and this is what is happening with David. David is grieving for his son. And Joab is, I would say, he is making David feel guilty because Absalom was wicked. Yes, he was wicked and he wanted to get rid of his father. But David knew beforehand that this was to happen because remember what he had done earlier. And this is just payback for what he had done to Uriah the Hittite so he is getting exactly I would say what he deserved because he sent Uriah into the hottest battle because he took Uriah's wife Bathsheba the king arose and sat at the gate and they told unto all the people saying behold the king doth sit in the gate and all the people came before the king for Israel had fled every man to his tent and all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel saying the king saved us out of the hand of our enemies and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines and now he is fled out of the land of 
Absalom. Can you imagine that? The people are laughing at David. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing back the king? And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. So the king returned and came to Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal to go over to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was of Bahurim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him, and they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household, and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over to Jordan, and said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely. The day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, and that the king should take it to his heart, for thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph, to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this? Because he cursed the Lord's anointed. <laughs> and David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do I, for do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swear unto him. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed, until the day he came again in peace. And it came to pass, when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon, and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. Remember now, Mephibosheth, he fell from his nurse when he was a baby, and he was he was crippled and david decided that he's gonna fulfill his duties to keep uh, Mep mephibosheth all right mephibosheth was also saul's son and he had
hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. We do slander each other daily. In our daily lives, you meet upon people who slander people. It is still happening even today. And God is watching over each and every one of us who does this because it is not something that is pleasant. Remember what? Remember what Aaron and Miriam did. They were slandering. They were talking behind Moses' back. And Moses was God's man. All right? Yes. He was his messenger, his servant where he would speak to him personally not in any dreams but we remember how Moses walked with God in the day and it is still happening today where people will talk behind people's backs and it is not pleasant God did punish Miriam and Aaron for doing that all right for all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king Yet thou didst set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right, therefore, have I yet to cry any more unto the king? And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of this matter? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the land. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all. For as much as my lord the king is come again in peace unto his own house, and Barzilla the Gileadite came down from Rogelim and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now Barzillai was a very aged man, even fourscore years old. And he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahanim. For he was a very great man. He was rich. He was of substance. He was a man of wealth. All right. And the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live? that I should go up with the king into Jerusalem. I am this day four score years old, which would be, I think, 80 years old. I think he would be 80. And can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant yet be a burden unto my lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. And why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? In other words, he is asking, I am so old, why you want to bother with me? Why? I can't eat and drink like I used to back in the day. So why is it you want to take me with you? I don't want to be a burden to anyone. And when we have gotten old, we don't want to be a burden, not even to our children. Isn't that so? All right. Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in my own city. Many of us, when we get old and we are experiencing sicknesses, we say, look here, I want to go back to my country or to my hometown, whatever it is. A lot of people say that I want to be buried where my parents are, where my friends are, however be the case. They don't want to go and die in a foreign land. So I'm guessing that was what he was experiencing. And be buried by the grave of my father. There we go. And of my mother. But behold, thy servant, Chimham, let him go over with my lord the king and, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me. 
and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him. And he returned unto his own place. Then the king went unto Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him, and all the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen their way, and have brought the king and his household and all David's men with him over Jordan? And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us. Wherefore then, be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all of the king's cost? Or hath he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than he. Why then did he despise us, that your advice should not be first? had in bringing back our king and the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel I think this is like this is beginning now to sound like some rivalry going on here I believe some rivalry is happening because this one believes that he has more right than that one and that one believes that he has more right but let me tell you something we are all equal in God's sight there is no rivalry with God there is no we are all equal we all are one and whatever was happening here where Absalom was trying to overthrow David you can see clearly that God had David's back let us who are children of the Most High God live in accordance with his words with his laws with his precepts let us keep his testimonies because he knows what is good for us he knows what we are in need of to give them unto us he gave good gifts and he has blessed david he knew what david was in need of and he blessed david we can remember that god loved david and David, even though he has slipped up several times, but God forgave him. What a loving God. Let us, when we find ourselves on the wrong side of the law as it relates to God, let us return to him. Let us go back to him. Let us ask forgiveness because that's what David did. There is a, almost no sin that God doesn't forgive if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and you go out worshipping other gods, then no, that's a no-no with him. But there are sins, many, many, many sins that yes, you do get forgiveness. We might think that I have faltered so many times, I have fallen, I have sinned, God doesn't want me. When you have repented from a true heart, he knows. He sees. He knows even before we make those mistakes. He knows we are going to make the mistakes. But he allows us to make the choice of coming back to him. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. I am asking God to continue to keep me. Continue to, to, to keep my steps in line with his. To continue to guide me. Guide me, O oh, thou great Jehovah, through this barren land. I am weak, but mighty God, you are mighty. I want you, mighty God, to guide me with your powerful hand. Heavenly Father, I am thankful that 
that I have you as my father. I'm thankful that you love me with such a love that whatever it is that I do, as long as, mighty God, I have not committed any presumptuous sins and if I have, mighty God, I do ask forgiveness. You are the God that forgives. You are the God that we can run to when we are in trouble. You are our strong power. You are our rock, almighty God. We give you thanks for what you have already done for us. We give you thanks for what you are doing now. We give you thanks, almighty God, for what you have in the past prepared, the tables that you have spread for us. We are giving you thanks. And we have faith that it is already done. We thank you for healing. We thank you, Almighty God, for your continued provision. We thank you for health, for strength. And we are thankful that we have you as our Father. Help us not to look around and envy anyone for what they have. Help us not to be envious of anyone. But, Mighty God, we depend on you to give us according to your will. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your great love. We thank you, Almighty God, and we reverence you. We honor you with everything. Lord, whatever we fail of asking you, we ask you to continue to grant it unto us. Fail not to grant it unto us according to your will. We give you thanks. In the name of your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Lord, for hearing. We thank you for answering. And we leave everything in your hands and in your care. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, O oh Lord, I give you thanks. Thank you for watching guys. Remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more contents. See you in another video. I appreciate you all stopping by to watch this video. If you have reached thus far, don't forget to give this video a like. Thank you all. See you next time. Walk good and walk with love.